This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening. This is VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. It is Thursday, the 29th of November, 2018. You also may be listening to this broadcast on Friday, the 30th, Saturday, the 1st of December, 2018, or Sunday, the 2nd of December, 2018. You can hear VORW Radio International each week online via TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, on your phone via the TuneIn and SoundCloud apps, and on the international shortwave frequencies of 9955, 9395, 7780, 7730, 7570, 5950, 5850, 5130, and 4840 kilohertz. This show goes out to you every week on radio stations WBCQ, WRMI, and WWCR. Our Saturday broadcast on WWCR 4840 kHz is sponsored by TotalChoiceHosting.com, a large-scale web hosting company which hosts over 50,000 websites and offers many more services. You could find them at TotalChoiceHosting.com. We've got some good talk and discussion coming up for you today. Hope you could stay tuned to VORW Radio International. <laughs> are listening to VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. Your questions, comments, feedback, and reception reports are most welcome via email to VORWINFO at gmail.com. Send me an email if you can. It's the only way that I know that anyone is out there listening, and without any listeners, we don't have any radio show. So whether you're tuned in for the first time or the 102nd time, Whether you're listening in online, on your phone, or on your shortwave radio, feedback is welcome and very much appreciated. V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com I would... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apologize for something that doesn't necessarily need to be apologized for, but I want to do so perhaps as a precautionary measure. You know, recently... Uh, the broadcasts that I've been doing have been very long-form programs. They've been very long shows, uh, some of which extend uh, well over two hours. And it's because it's it's just been a talkative time, I suppose, is the best way to put it. It's just one of those times where I just have a a lot of garbage to to spew out of my mouth. That's all that there is to it. And there's going to be some days where I'm feeling better than others. Uh, my, My health and energy is not perfect. And some days I'll be able to go on and rattle on about this or that or the other thing. Probably indefinitely. And then there are other times where, uh, I might not, and it might be significantly more toned down. And the only reason is, is today is one of those days. So if this ends up not being any longer of a show, uh, please understand. And These shows are really of indeterminate length. Of course, our radio broadcasts are one hour in length, because that is the time that I have been able to purchase. But SoundCloud, and then sometimes I'll take those hours and I'll split them up and put them on various shortwave frequencies, depending on on where I think they might be uh, better received by the listening audience program-wise. But on SoundCloud, I can go on for one hour, two, I could go on for 10 hours, or or 24, or 48, or there's no time limit when it comes down to SoundCloud, uh, because I was able to get the premium membership, but that's a payment right there. That's another expense that adds up and, you know, is tacked on. And and that's why everything for this broadcast adds up, uh, financially speaking. But anyway, today is one of those days where I'm, as uh, some people like to say, low energy. But I am indeed, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, It's an undeniable fact. Since I woke up today, 
I've been... I've just felt exhausted. The moment since I got up, believe it or not, I, I woke up and there I was. I was tired, uh, you know, an energy drink and a uh, large caffeinated beverage from Starbucks did nothing to help. And, uh, well, here we are roughly 12 hours later and uh, still just as, just as tired. But I said, I have a show to do. And I'm going to try to do it to the best of my abilities, nonetheless. So that's why I mentioned in regards to length and the indeterminate nature thereof. Now, one funny thing that I want to get to before uh, we get to a few topics. Really, it's, it's, it's two topics that I want to uh, get to in this show. Number one, this is just, I find it kind of funny. The other day, because sometimes I will record segments in advance, because uh, you know I'll I'll get I'll get that motivational drive to really talk about something, so I'll go ahead I'll get the microphone and I'll lecture on for a while. And the other day, I really I mean I I put a lot of time into this. I sat there and I was answering a listener question. And I, I talked, and I talked, and by the time I was done, I lectured for 45 minutes on this subject, and I edited the audio, I spent a good three hours probably editing it, making sure the levels were good, and I listened to it today, and I thought, I don't want to air this, I, uh, I, I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't I wasn't satisfied with it. So uh I'm just despite energy or lack thereof, I, I just decided now nah, I'm gonna do a redo. And sometimes that's okay. You might put a lot of effort into a product or uh endeavor or any undertaking and the outcome it just may not be what you, you wanted it to be. And that's okay. So I decided, all right, I'm just going to do a redo, and that's fine. So first and foremost, we have two topics coming up for you today, along with the listener-requested music selections. If you'd like to suggest a topic for discussion on this broadcast, it is most welcome, and you may suggest any topic, though I do not give a guarantee that I will discuss it, but there is no harm in bringing your suggestion to the table. All I ask is that you let me know what way you are listening, whether you're tuned in on TuneIn, on SoundCloud, or on Shortwave. Let me know what topics you'd like to hear, and send me an email at vorwinfo at gmail.com. That is not to say that I am necessarily qualified to deliver a concise consensus on one topic or the next, but I can certainly offer my thoughts if there are any to be shared. It is a cold, a cold night tonight. I'll get that off the table first. It's a cold night. Uh, the The heating system is going. I don't know if you could really hear it in the background or not, but it is. It's windy outside, and uh, I'm bundled up, layering, layering up. That's what I do when it gets cold, uh, because you know, it, it, it's just the more layers I figure I wear, the the better. So I. I always try to go with some sort of three-piece suit. So I'll go with the dress shirt, then it's like a sweater or a sweater vest, and the suit jacket on top of that. But that's not going to stop my hands from getting cold, because they certainly are freezing. But you could always warm them up, put them over a flame, or put them under hot water, or wear gloves. It's probably the easiest of all three. But nonetheless, cold weather, winter fast approaching. The first topic that we uh, received over the last week was from a listener in a much warmer place, though not by too terribly much, a listener in Florida, who wanted to know what my thoughts were on being an outcast. And I found that an interesting topic, because it is something that I, I could relate to, But at the same time, you know, my view on it, anyway, may not necessarily be 
the view that you would like to hear. And this individual is listening on SoundCloud. Because the term outcast always, in my opinion, carries a negative connotation to it. Where if the term outcast is used, it's it's almost always due to one negative reason or another, or it's following negative circumstances, or, or one thing or the other. And you have to understand, I imagine when people might ask me, because I believe the question was phrased, and I'm just going off of memory here, how, how would you deal with being an outcast? In my opinion, the way I interpret the question, maybe it's not necessarily as it is, but to me it seemed like a question of maybe how do I not become an outcast anymore? I can't give you a good answer for that question. I really can't. The reason is because I am a very introverted person, and, you know, if as long as it wasn't for something terrible, if I was outcast and everyone stopped, you know, talking to me and it was like I was invisible in society, I would embrace that, you know, that I could finally go back outside again and and uh, not have to worry so much anymore. So, if I were just kind of outcast and shut out by society, that wouldn't necessarily bother me one single bit. I think I would actually embrace the solitude and uh, almost see it as uh, Christmas having come early. But I don't think that's the answer that many people would like to hear. Uh, a lot of a lot of people are very sociable. And understandably so. Mind you, be, even though I may be introverted, that doesn't mean that I have any sort of hate or, or anything towards people who wish to socialize. I have nothing wrong if you're someone who likes to go to a party every weekend or every night, every other night or so on and so forth. That doesn't bother me one single bit. I just, I just prefer less stimuli. And that's all that there is to it. But I think to give a generalized answer, if you feel that you are, so to speak, an outcast, and it's something that you're either concerned about, or it's it's eating away at you, or you want to stop being that, you want to break free of it, I think the first thing, most importantly, is to realize the following. The definition of being an outcast is to be rejected by a group, rejected by others, rejected by society, to be on your own. You have to look at it this way. Ask yourself, why in the first place was I rejected by society? Why am I an outcast? And usually, it comes down to one of two things. Either something that you said or did that people don't necessarily look highly upon, not necessarily as a whole. This, is, this comes down to very specific circumstances, something that only applies to you. Or how other people view you in a way that does not necessarily conform to their set of standards, so to speak. So you have to understand and analyze the situation. Why, why am I an outcast, if you are? And I can't give you that answer. It's something that's going to apply uniquely to your situation. And there will always be a reason for it. In some cases, it may be something as simply as the way you look, or the way you appear. And that's oftentimes sad, but it is, that does happen. Sometimes it'll be due to the way you think, the way you act. Sometimes it may very well be because you may be a toxic, insufferable person, and no one wants to be around you. 
but let's ignore that one uh, because I don't want to make anyone feel that they are something that they may not be. Although I could certainly say when it comes down to individuals who are toxic, uh, <laughs> need I say anything more? But nonetheless, when your circumstance is narrowed down, then look at it the following way. How badly do I want to be accepted by others? Think about how you are now, whatever it is that you're doing now, and think, if I had to change that in order to get back into that social circle, will I? And how will I feel doing that? Consider the following, because very likely, if it is because of something that you do, did, or other people think, you may very well need to make a compromise and sacrifice something if you want to get back into those circles. doesn't necessarily apply. You know, I remember, though, again, this isn't something that I can really give any expert advice because my own view of it is very very different more of something that I embraced than anything else and that's something that you could do too if that's what you want but I just remember the best example I, I, I recall is when I first started dressing very formally and it was when I was at a younger age in in high school and of course when everyone is that age everyone can be very judgmental upon others. So of course the first day that I came in wearing formal attire everyone was kind of looking at me funny. And it wasn't like giving me looks like, wow, you know, you look like a, a million bucks. No, it was you know, why are you, why do you look like that? Why are you wearing that exactly? And then over time, you know some people, they just didn't they kind of felt, you know, like, why why do you have to wear that? Why are you, uh, why, why do you have to dress that way? No one else is. And it was kind of that, that type of rejection in that way, because I dressed differently than everyone else. Some people shut that out. But I remember thinking, well, dressing very formally in this way doesn't hurt anyone else, and that's the most important thing. My ideology is do what makes you happy as long as it doesn't hurt other people. This isn't harming anyone, and it is giving me great enjoyment. It's something that that I look very forward to. And at the time, it meant a lot to me. So, would I rather give that up and wear something that I don't necessarily want to in order to be around a few more people? And I thought to myself, uh, no. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the rejection. So that's why I don't necessarily consider myself a qualified speaker on that topic. I would suggest if you would try to get into and in, in try and break the mold, so to speak, certainly look into many resources online, which I am certain are far more accurate and articulate than anything that would come out of my mouth would be. This is VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. I'm going to take a quick break here with some listener-requested music. Again, any and all correspondence may be sent to VORWINFO at gmail.com. You're listening to VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. If you're tuned in right now, your questions, comments, feedback, reception reports, and music requests all are welcome at vorwinfo at gmail.com. That's vorwinfo at gmail.com. Well, with my with my luck, with my uh, good good fortune, uh, the the internet's out, <laughs> and uh, obviously, in order to do this show each and every week. Despite it going out on various broadcast mediums where the internet is not necessary, unfortunately, I do need the internet to produce and run this program. 
And uh, with that being gone, right now that's a significant hurdle. I have a feeling that it's it's. I don't think it's an issue here on my end. It's just it's been very windy. I have a feeling that that just kind of interrupted service, and uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some lines down somewhere. Or, either way, it is what it is. It's it's one of those things that I have no control over, you know. So, what can you do about it? As a result, though, things are a bit more disorganized on my end than I would prefer uh, for it to be. So as a result, when it comes down to the music and uh, listener feedback, I just kind of have to go off of what I already have on my end before it, before the internet at least uh, went down. Uh, but anyway, your feedback is welcome, V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. I can't even monitor whether this broadcast is even going out or not anymore, so if you're hearing it, uh, let me know. Let me know if the audio is in check and if it's sounding good. V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. But we played two songs for you, both of them listener request. The first was a a request from Charles, listening on SoundCloud in West Hollywood, California. He wanted to hear the song You Do or You Don't by Lindsey Buckingham. It was off of his album, Out of the Cradle, from 1992. And, of course, Lindsey Buckingham, he's best known for his work with Fleetwood Mac, as their lead guitarist, so uh, he's a very talented musician there. And that second song is a request from Blake in Louisville, Kentucky. He wanted to hear the song First Week, Last Week, Carefree by the Talking Heads. It was from their debut album, Talking Heads 77, which I think the name kind of gave it away, was released in 1977. Of course, I do wish to mention that this broadcast is completely listener-funded. I tried to outline that... If no funding comes in, there won't be any radio show. I tried to hammer that in last week. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you that came forward and did place a donation last week via PayPal to vorwinfo at gmail.com or via Patreon at patreon.com slash the report of the week. The one thing I think that everyone just needs to remember is that because this broadcast is a continuous endeavor, the costs always come back around each and every month after month. Uh, that's just something to remember, you know? they Some things might end up getting taken care of for the time being, and then a month from now it'll all come back around again because the airtime is paid for on a monthly basis. But just keep that in mind, and if you'd like to support this broadcast... Again, there's a large listening audience. If only a small percentage of listeners came forward and did donate, uh, any and all financial issues would no longer be issues. If you'd like to donate, though, uh, donate twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars, anything helps. V o r w i n f o at gmail dot com via PayPal is the way to do it. Again, via PayPal, V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O, at gmail.com. Well, anyway, I, have, I said we have the internet issues going. They're still there. I want to read a few quick uh, emails that I do have saved. Oscar in uh, Sweden tuned in last week. He enjoyed the lecture on the colorblindness last week. And uh, he said he happens to suffer from total colorblindness, uh, monochromacy, which I talked about. And he says... He's had it since birth, so it doesn't really bother him at all, but he really said he had some fun enjoying uh, my take on it and how I would react to it. So thank you, Oscar, for tuning in. Thomas in North Carolina, he's listening in on 4840 kilohertz. He said a very pleasant listening experience, and uh, that frequency comes in very well. Thank you, Thomas. Jose in uh, Chino, California, online listener for five months. Thank you for tuning in, Jose. Rob in uh, Westchester, New York. Thank you, Rob, for listening in. Chris uh, is tuned in as well. He wanted to hear my thoughts on UFOs, and I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about that type of stuff in a minute. Uh, This listener who goes by the name Dio, he wanted to know, will buying any merchandise on your uh, online store support the show? It will. If if you would like to get any merchandise to support this broadcast, uh, T-shirts, a coffee mug stickers, etc., you may do so online at teespring.com 
slash stores slash the report of the week that will go to help support this broadcast. Of course, the sales are always a little iffy, but of course that could be another way to help support this show. I want to read a few more reception reports that came in. Andy in Central Texas listening in on 75, 70 kilohertz of good reception. He's really enjoying the show. Ramsey in the Tippecanoe River in Indiana listening on 7570 on his 1937 Zenith radio. Uh, Benon in coastal Brazil listening on 7570 as well. Weak signal, but listenable, he said. Uh, James in Centerville, Virginia is tuned in. Uh, listened in on 7570 as well. He enjoyed the uh, songs, let's see, from Mountain Goats last week and also from Goldfinger. Uh, let's see if we could find anything else here. As I said, it's more disorganized today because of the no internet. Uh, Paula in Barcelona, Spain, listening in on SoundCloud. Thank you for tuning in. Marty in St. Louis, Missouri, also listening in. Greg on the east coast of Florida said reception is uh, good indoors on 4840 kilohertz. Thank you, Greg. A uh, listener in India checking in said, I really enjoyed your lecture about technology and what the future holds. Looking forward to future broadcasts. Thank you, sir. Ahmed in Iraq listening in on SoundCloud. He says, since June of 2018. Well, let's not let the internet impede us too much, and let's go on to our next topic for discussion. If you have a product or a service, whether you work for a large corporation or a small business, Consider advertising on VORW Radio International. It's a great way to support this broadcast and keep it on air, while also getting your message out to thousands of listeners domestically and internationally. If you would like to get your message out there, please contact me at VORWINFO at gmail.com, and I will do my best to get your message out at a rate you can afford. So the last topic for discussion uh, on today's broadcast, and then we're just going to go into some listener requests and uh, dedications and uh, all the good music to uh, conclude the broadcast. I was amazed at the amount of requests that I got for this specific... Well, it's, it's, it's a topic that covers multiple other ones, but... Generally speaking, I was amazed at the amount of requests that I got for this topic. Where so many people wrote in uh, wanting to know my thoughts on issues like the uh, the paranormal, you know, ghosts, uh, aliens, UFOs, cryptoid creatures, whether their existence is legitimate or otherwise, or what I think on it. And I was pretty surprised, and this is something that I can go on about for quite some time, but I didn't expect to get so many uh, requests for that that type of topic. Uh, But a lot of people wrote in, they wanted to hear, I guess just my my generalized thoughts, so to speak, on any of those things. And I know I can go on for quite some time on any of those topics, and I might end up doing that in in future shows down the road, where I might go ahead and... uh, you know, just uh, kind of take these topics and, uh, you know, I could talk at, at some decent length about each one. What my policy is when it comes down to that stuff is not necessarily to, like, let's say, let's just look at, uh, you know, the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Not to unconditionally believe it, but to look at it, analyze it, keep it in mind, and then form my own opinion regarding it. So when it comes down to, I, I, I believe when it comes down to the universe, right, how, how large it is, I think there certainly is other life out there. I believe in very small ways, but also there might be intelligent life as well. Have aliens ever visited the Earth before? I mean, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I myself, I've never had any sort of, uh, you know, UFO type of encounter or anything. I've never seen one, and I've never had any experience. But can I fully cross it off the the list and say they haven't? Well, I mean, I don't know. 
I I never saw it, but if proof is ever shown to me undeniably that you know the extraterrestrial life that some people hypothesize about, you know, the little green men and then the flying saucers and all that, if they really do exist and it's proven to be, I'm not going to stick my head in the sand and try and refute that. Uh, so I always try to keep an open mind when it comes down to that stuff. I think one thing when it comes down to some, not all, but some UFOs, I would imagine that you know, a lot of sightings are uh, false, you know, false reports, uh, where, where people will very likely end up seeing probably experimental aircraft from, uh, you know, the government, uh, maybe not even the U.S. government, but likely experimental aircraft being tested out, uh, certain spy planes, drones, etc., that may not have a design many people would be familiar with I imagine some people will see those aircraft of course the governments aren't going to, going to acknowledge their existence if it's a project that's kept under under the table so to speak but I can understand how people might be able to see that and think that it is extraterrestrial when in reality it is you know it is, is just an aircraft piloted by people but just kept kept secret for the purposes of surveillance and national security and and uh, so on and so forth. When it comes down to other things, like all of, you know how people, they, they go on about Bigfoot and, and all those types of uh, things. There was a time when I really did uh, believe that, you know, those types of, of creatures, like a Sasquatch and uh, the Yeti and all that, existed. I have my significant doubts. The last time I really was convinced that I thought they existed was probably 2016. And then I thought to myself, well, why haven't they found any sort of body? You know, why haven't they found one yet? Why hasn't anyone hit one with their car? I think, again, it might end up being largely a case of mistaken identity, where if rumors about these creatures exist in folklore and, and uh, you know, stories are passed down, and you really just, you almost expect it to be there, and then you hear a noise, you look, maybe it's really just a bear, or who knows, but because your mind is in this one, this one certain mindset, where you're just thinking about these types of Bigfoot-esque creatures, you may just identify what was otherwise just a bear or, or some sort of, you know, wolf or or anything like that, and you may just see it as something else, because that's not what you necessarily want to see, but because your mind has just been on that topic for so long, that's just what it might end up end up coming out as, just kind of a, a trick of the eye, so to speak. I mean, again, you never know what's out there. And look, if conclusive proof is ever shown that any of those things ever really do exist, like I said, I'm not going to put my head in the sand and and refute it. Uh, it would be quite the surprise, but I would accept it. But it'd be, it would be quite the surprise. I think if there is any sort of place or any sort of mysterious, uh, you know, yet discovered <laughs> creatures, so to speak, would exist, it'd be the ocean. People always forget how absolutely massive the ocean is, how how incredibly gigantic, and the fact that it's not just an inch deep, you know, it's not just a foot deep. Bob, it is thousands of thousands of feet deep in many parts, and with the ocean floor still having been largely unmapped, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if there were things down there uh, that, you know, a lot of people would largely think have been gone. So that's the thing I think of any really legitimate interesting discoveries in terms of life forms would be made, probably, probably be made in the ocean, especially, I would imagine, the, the very deep, deep waters. And, you know, trust me, very large things could hide out there. I, I know, you know, giant squid, for instance was thought to be something of near-mythical status for a while. 
And then about, you know, five, six years ago, oh no, it actually turns out that they were real and that they could be nearly, you know, 50 feet in length and and so on. But the ocean is so massive and so huge and just the financial resources don't exist to go and, in the metaphorical sense, fish through it all. Who would know? So that's my two cents on that. These topics I could certainly just kind of dissect, pull them out, and uh, really just probably make a separate show out of each of them, because I could certainly, as I said, I have no stories of any encounters myself with any of these things, but I certainly have my opinions and my thoughts on them, and that's something that I, I very likely will end up talking about in great detail later on. Well, to anyone else who is uh, listening to this broadcast on SoundCloud, I'm going to have to cut the the show off here, I'm afraid, Uh, but I do want to give a a few uh, last listener shout-outs. I just, you know, my head has gotten worse as as I've been recording this, so on to the next week. You know, every every week we have this broadcast that goes out, and uh, every week the show will be uh, a different length. You know, some programs will be longer than others, and uh, so on and so forth. But your feedback is welcome. V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. That's V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. And also please consider supporting this broadcast via PayPal to V-O-R-W-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. A few last listeners, I do want to give a shout-out. Uh, Eric in Vancouver Island, British Columbia, listened on 5850 kHz. I said signal strength is decent. Uh, John in central Minnesota checking in on 5850 kHz as well. Very good uh, signal. Dave in Colorado Springs. He says he's been an amateur radio operator since 1999. And he recently got a portable radio and heard the broadcast on 5850 kHz. Uh, Warren in Carleton, Georgia. He uh, submitted a reception report for 5850 kHz as well. Pete, uh, listening in from Central Texas, also on 5850 shortwave. Uh, yes, it's it's interesting. Last week, uh, reception was largely uh, terrible on almost all frequencies except for 5850 and 4840 kilohertz. And it's just funny how it, it does change from week to week and then from month to month. How I remember two months ago, uh, the frequency of 93.95 kilohertz would get dozens of reports every single week, and, and now I think for the last two weeks it hasn't even gotten a single one. Uh, same thing goes for 77.30 kilohertz, but uh, nonetheless it fluctuates, and I'm just glad that there's a frequency getting out there that uh, people are, are tuning into. A few last uh, listeners checking in. Uh, Anita in Croatia listening in. Uh, she said thank you for the show. Brian in Singer Island, Florida. It's great to hear from you, uh, Brian, regular listener. Benjamin listening in on SoundCloud from uh, San Diego, California. Hello to you, Benjamin. Vivian in North Carolina tuned in on 7780 kHz. Good reception. Felix in uh, Switzerland checking in from SoundCloud. And uh, and one final note, this reception report does go to show, though, that uh, even if some, you know, propagation, I guess, on a shortwave may not be the best, there is, you, you know, you shouldn't give up. Uh, because I got a reception report last week from Peter in Perth, Western Australia, and he managed to pick up the broadcast on 99.55 kilohertz with a good signal at that. He was able to listen for 30 minutes. I'd never heard the show before. He was scanning around, and he uh, he picked up my uh, my broadcast that's beamed south from Florida uh, to South America. And what it did is the broadcast... Obviously, once it reaches the end of South America, it's just going to keep going. So, of course, I I believe that the Earth is is a sphere, that it's not flat. So, obviously, it continued on past South America, went over Antarctica, and then hit Australia, too. So, uh, you know, that goes to show sometimes the shortwave signals can travel extremely far. And, uh, you know, there's, there's... No matter where you are in the world, it always... If you have a radio, anyway. If you don't, I recommend you get one. If you have any questions, you can email me, vorwinfo at gmail.com. But if you have any 
radios at hand, especially the ones that receive shortwave, regardless of where you are, there is no harm in trying out reception where you are, because, I mean, Western Australia is one of those locations, uh, geographically speaking, that it would be most difficult to hear this broadcast on. Uh, yet a listener was able to pick it up, as able to verify his report. It was It's still possible. Conditions, they may need to be in your favor, but in a reception, even in parts of the world like Australia, is certainly possible. With that, thank you for tuning in. This is VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. I'm going to conclude this with uh, maybe one, two more songs, but I'm not going to get back on after this. Uh, this request was uh, sent in from two different listeners, so I guess it's just, you know, one of those things where people want to hear it. Uh, one listener, his name is Ryan, he, he requested this, and another listener, her name is Maria, they both wanted to hear the song Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order. Uh, that'll be played, that'll be the song to conclude this broadcast, and then maybe I will, maybe I won't. I might, I might pick something from my own repertoire, uh, though I might play it in the next show instead, but I'm thinking about playing something from the, uh, a very small group from the early 90s with some uh, power pop, the semantics. I might play another song of theirs. We'll see, though. And nonetheless, thank you for tuning in. This is VORW Radio International, the voice of the Report of the Week. And I hope you can join us again next week on SoundCloud here. SoundCloud.com slash VORW underscore radio underscore INT. Or on TuneIn or on your radio. Thank you again for listening, and do take care. This is VORW.